All right, we're live back here with uh, T. Bernie, the cosmetic executive. Uh, now, Bernie, I think T. Bernie, I think one of the one of the, the main things that you talked about, and we're not going to prolong it because we, our time is almost out. But the main thing that you talked about, which is so important, and that is is to have that financing in place. A lot of people come to me. I do a lot of consulting with salons. And a lot of times they come to me, they, they have great talent, they have a great passion, but at the end of the day, they don't have any money. Hmm. Right. So let me talk about what those funds need to be used for, because I do think people uh, certainly need to have this understanding if they want to launch a line. And I come into contact with makeup artists all the time, and, you know, that's what people want to do. Everyone wants to become a brand na- nowadays. So let's just understand the context of this. Like, the global beauty market is over $300 billion, and the U.S. beauty market is over $60 billion. And if you want to talk about ethnic-specific products, because I know that's what you said, um, the, the question is, uh, that in and of itself is over $3 billion. We're talking about very big markets. There are thousands of products launched each mm-hmm. year. So that means there's a lot of clutter. There are a lot of messages out there. So you need money, number one, to develop whatever these products are. And typically, if you're a small and you're a startup brand, it's very hard to find manufacturers who are going to do minimum order inventory that you can afford, which is why you need the financing. The next thing is, just because you make it does not mean that they will come nor will they buy. So what you're going to be spending, you know, the lion's share um, financing on is advertising and promotion because you have to get the brand out there. Mm-hmm. Yes, there are lots of options virally, but even from a viral perspective, you still have to spend a little bit of money on search engine optimization. You still have to make sure that you produce enough that you are going to do a press send to all of your major media and all of the major bloggers that you want talking about. You're going to need to have a precedent or maybe, you know, a launch junket where you go to a couple of different cities. All of those expenses add up very, very quickly. That's and right. that's the third big thing that requires a lot of financing is distribution. Selling off of your own site will not necessarily get you there because you cannot possibly hold on to too much inventory. It need, you need selling. It needs to get shipped out and distributed Somewhere, whether or not you go as big as, you know, Macy's department store, you know, the Federated, or, you know, making sure that there is an independent salon network, you know, 20, 50, 100 of them that are buying into your product. And that distribution can actually be quite expensive because something that people don't think about is, oh, my gosh, I made this makeup product. What is the merchandising that this is going to sit on in store? I kid you not. Those plastic stands that you see add up very quickly. And any time you don't have the economies of scale of producing a lot, it gets even more expensive. So you need the financing for product development, for advertising and promotions, and for distribution and merchandising. Okay, so I'm going to ask the next question. Where is the money coming from? Is that your family, private investor, traditional banking? What do you see happening? It, it, it's actually it's actually a mix, and it depends on how phase how you're phasing in your how you choose to phase your launch plan with this line, and how big of a line it is. If you want to just do a nice edited skew count to start with, you know, of ten, twelve items. Are you ready because you're doing color cosmetics, and you want to make sure you have complexion, foundation, lips, cheeks. Eyes, you know, and you need a minimum of 80 to 100 skews. You know, that really depends. But because of that AMP, I really would suggest you you have to have some of your own money saved up and develop that credit line that you need to go out and raise the finance. So yeah. then we have the issue of credit, which is a whole nother show all by itself. Yes, that's a whole nother <laughs> show. And I can certainly refer people to right. do that show. <laughs> well, Bernie, you know, I want to ask you after today's show, is there going to be something on your site that people can go to and get more information? Because unfortunately, you know, we could probably talk about this all day. But, you know, our time is up. So where do they go? 
They can go to facebook.com backslash T Bernie Talks Beauty. I am working on a feature article piece that I'm shopping around that will, um, once it's actually um, printed, I'll certainly be announcing what publication that uh, that's going to be featured in to find more information there. And then typically each spring, between either Black History Month or Women's History Month, I certainly host a workshop in New York City where that's where I take all of my questions. Will you do me a favor? Will you let us know when that happens so we can revisit the topic and give some more information? Absolutely. I certainly will. All right, well, Bernie. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. It was a pleasure. Uh, it was a pleasure. And, and Happy Mer holidays to you yeah. and you all too. of the listeners. Yes, and Merry Christmas. All right, everyone, that was T. Bernie, the cosmetic executive. Now, one of the things that um, T. Bernie said that is on my list, I have the three carnal rules, uh, Alonzo. Make sure you're listening. Now, the three carnal rules of what you need to do in order to have a successful business in the beauty industry. Let's get it. Okay. Now, the first one is you must know your business through and through. Part of the times, uh, oftentimes, I have so many people who come to me who say, I want a barbershop. I want a salon. They have no barbershop experience. They have no salon experience. They've <laughs> never been to school before, but they have a degree in business. Right. Just because you have a degree in business does not mean that you can own a barbershop or a hair salon. You need to specialize in your area. You need to make sure the first thing I tell those jokers who come to me, come enroll in school. Learn how to do it because especially black folk, I'm sorry, forgive me, but especially black folk, they will run out on you in a heartbeat. And then what do you have left? Well, you know, you also have the, the private financer mix where you have a business person, but your partner is the person who specialized in the career that can work too mm, yeah but you know I, I i have a problem with that too because i don't believe in partnership but that's a whole nother story um the first thing, what are we the first thing <laughs> is this is the seattle <laughs> morning show and you are the co-host now um the, <laughs> the next thing is besides knowing your business through and through i think that's very important because at the end of the day you don't want to rely on anyone else right. you, you want to make sure that you doing. can service every client in case something go down because oftentimes once god begins elevate you you're going to have people jealousy turns into envy which turns into hatred and then those same people that came on board with you are now really hating on the side i know i'm preaching today okay so did you give us a three or you just we did one that's one thank you the second one is you need to get your license and build a clientele the very building thing, a clientele very yes. the thing that is so important is it is crucial that you can, if you know that you want to get a salon or a barbershop and it's $2,000 a month, okay, baby, it's $2,000 a month, you need to make sure that you can pay that $2,000 a month by yourself before you even start bringing in other people. Because what they do, Seven, is they start counting the chairs. <laughs> and they say, well, okay, I got four chairs. I'm going to charge $200 a week per person, all of that. And what they're not realizing is That chair's not always filled. And people will leave you at the drop of a dime. Well, you know, I know you're going to do three, but I'm going to piggyback on your number two. Yeah, you get the client. How about retaining them? Most definitely. And and, that, and that's what I mean by building that clientele. Because part of building one shot deal is not going to do it. Yeah, part of building is retaining. And, you know, uh, uh, I have a salon that, uh, well, I know of a salon, put it that way, that they're very, you know, that they get the walk ins, but a lot of times the walk ins, you know, they don't, don't come, come back. back. And that is where you have to look at yourself and say, what am I doing? Not doing. Too. And what am I not doing? Exactly. Because a client that comes in the door, you have to treat that client like she is a queen or he is a king. Because by doing that, by treating that client like he's a king or queen, then you will be able to have those residual people coming back, retention, back, 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 retention, back, back, back. My final thing is what Bernie talked about, and that was credit. You have to make sure, everyone, that you have some money. And a lot of times, credit is even more important than money. Because, Absolutely. Because it's able to get you indoors and it's able to help you in order to build your business. What most people do, we got to go to commercial, but what most people do, Seven, is they open up a business. The main reason, listen to me, the main reason why salons do not do well in their businesses when they first start out because they do not have a what? An advertising budget. You have to have some C-A-S-H. When you are opening a business, Madam C.J. Walker, 
my famous quote, it doesn't matter how good you are if nobody knows. Hello. You have to be able to get yourself get the out there. Out. Get yourself out there so people can know what you're doing. We don't know what's going on in your place of business if you're not advertising. Come over to Radio 1 and pull out that money and give them some money to advertise, not only on my show, but on all the shows. Okay. That is the reason why we have banner ads. We get thank God for attitudes. Attitudes hair salon. They're looking for some booth renters. All right, everybody, we're about to go to commercial break. This is the C. Allen Morning Show with Ben and Brown. We're discussing today the business, business of beauty. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> 